Good afternoon and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well. I've not been well, actually. can genuinely say that. I've had the worst cold I think I've ever had. Um, and it's been oh, six days now. And this is the first kind of day that I can actually talk and sound more like a human. Gen generally speaking, every time I've uttered a couple of words, it'll end up in a, in a coughing fit. So if I do start coughing and hacking through the video, I do apologise. Um, it's just that <laughs> I was meant to be doing quite a bit of filming this week and I've not been able to do any. So I'm kind of pushing my luck a bit um, and trying to get video out today or a couple of videos out today just so I can get back to schedule. Anyway, enough woes about me. I mean, honestly, though, this was a really bad cold. This was proper man flu. And I would go as far as to say it felt worse than when I had bloody COVID. So, yeah, be careful out there. Colds are horrible. Um, I was really surprised. I tested every day and I didn't actually have COVID because it actually felt much, much worse than when I got COVID last time. But there you go. Anyway, as I promised, enough about me. I hope you guys are well, though. Um, anyway, let's get straight back into it before I lose my voice completely. Um, we're going to be talking about a new one from my dear friend Dan's house, Soma Perfumes. And it's this one here. And it's they've, they've basically released two, two, two. They've released two new fragrances in there. And it's like an Oud collection they've done. So this is it here. And it's called Oud Fortius. Now, the other one is called Oud Altius. And I believe they've both taken their names from the inspiring Olympics, you know, because obviously there's the, you know, the, the Olympic slogans and terminology that they use. And they've kind of been sort of inspired to make these fragrances fit for olympians shall we say and they're really really bloody good um yes dan is a friend of mine but if i was slightly underwhelmed by this or the other one we wouldn't be having this conversation so you can trust me um when i say that this fragrance is fantastic um and without being too much of a gusher i don't I, i'm struggling to think of another f new fragrance released this year that has impressed me as much as that one so that's a massive thing to say um obviously i haven't tried every new fragrance in the in, you know that's been released this year but i've tried quite a few and this one has stood out head and shoulders above me i really 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 love this one um as you can see the presentation has changed so what we'll do is we'll tell you a little to tour de force of, of how the collection has looked up over the short amount of time that they've been going. So this is Viridi, this is one of the original releases and you can see the bottle's pretty much the same but the plate has changed and so has the cap. Then the next one of the new batches um, that I personally absolutely fell in love with and I really, really like this one too. And this is called Tempest, um, another slightly kind of dark, exciting um, fragrance. But I have mentioned this in another video about Ouds um so if you want i think it's like four ouds you need to try or something like that so have a look when i talk about this one in a lot more detail but this is a beautiful fragrance and um, for the actual sort of oud collection as you can see the bottles now have a black plate and a black cap they're, they're exactly the same other than the the color change so it's like a reverse gold you know uh this is black on gold and then gold on black and they both look fantastic the, honestly the box that they come in is beautiful the whole presentation the way the the, the bottles are presented and put together is fantastic really weighty i mean the cat weighs a ton and it's just it's it's a class act it's absolute quality um and you know it's all well and good having a fantastic bottle and beautiful presentation if the fragrance inside is a bit meh and this one really really isn't it's about as dramatic a fragrance as i've, I've smelt in a long time um and in, and in so much so it's kind of made me think of other houses but i've been waffling about the presentation far too long because let's face it we don't wear a bottle do we what i'm going to do is i've got it on at the moment but i'm going to spray it on a on a sample strip a test strip rather um so I get the opening again, and then we'll go through the notes. Okay, so let's just let that settle down, and we'll have a look at the notes. Okay, while that's settling down, um, let's talk a bit about Dan himself. Now, Dan's, obviously, he's the, he's the, the, the mind behind Soma. It's his baby, um, and which is so impressive that such a young house is churning out so many good fragrances, especially when you consider how busy Dan is. I mean, he's on Instagram, and his Instagram front page is just growing and growing and growing. And that must take up so much time. Obviously, he's a, he's a married man. He's got a family. And, you know, as one of them, I can say just how much time that eats up. Then he's got his career. Dan works in town planning. He's a highways, um, roads and maintenance planner. And that obviously takes an awful lot of time. On top of that, He's the co-host of Lizodorant's podcast, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and if you're not listening to that, you really, really should. There's some fantastic people on there. Um, and they really do, you know, have a, a light-hearted but thorough look at 
you know, our favourite hobby. So if yeah, please look out for the Les Odorants. And if you're not listening to it, I really suggest, strongly suggest you do. It's superb. Um, and then on top of that, um, not a lot of people know this about Dan, but um, and I don't think he would probably really want me to talk too much about it, but Dan is a very passionate um, activist. He's a campaigner. Um, and what him and a select other few individuals are, are doing is they're trying to rid the north of England of the scourge of potholes. Now, potholes are a blight on any community. You know, it's, it's a massive issue. And I think, you know, the work he's doing, the bravery and the commitment he's showing to, to, to fight in the battle against potholes, I think is something that we all should applaud. Not just those that live in the north of England, but those that live all over England deserve, you know, to, to give Dan a real round of you know, round of applause for, for such sterling work. Now, as I said, I know Dan doesn't particularly want me talking about that, but sometimes you've just got to mention it, you know. Not all heroes wear capes. Anyway, let's get back to Oud Fortius. Now, as this is starting to, 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 to dry down, just that, that initial burst of this is quite amazing. You've got the patchouli, the lavender, and the bergamot, so you get this really freshness that... that bounces out but there's a spiciness in the background and it's not surprisingly it's not coming from the caraway what I'm getting is a really subtle hint of cumin but it's not bogging it's not bo it just hints at something rather exotic and as this sort of freshness starts to kind of hand over the baton to the mid you've got this beautiful amberness that comes through but the caraway I mean caraway in itself is quite difficult to isolate in this but it certainly is for me but I, I think it kind of ties up with that cumin note to just give this wonderful, wonderful spiciness. But the freshness is still kind of there. The patch, obviously, patch and, you know, patch and oud kind of go together fantastically well. Geranium, I'm not getting too much of. There is a slight floral element, and I'm quite pleased with that because the other one in the collection is more of a rose oud. Now, this one isn't, and sometimes I find that geranium can be a little rose-like, and it's not here, so it's, it's really quite a... A good fragrance in the in respect that you've got a good oudy fragrance with no you know, with no dominant rose, which is lovely. You have the oud, and it does smell very very realistic. Um, it smells very natural. And then let's go to here. You've got this sandalwood and the slight hints of vetiver, and it's a bit musky. Cedar just comes across to me as a wood, so there's nothing that I can't really pick out cedar. I've just got this kind of oudy sandalwood dryness is almost like a dustiness to it and it's really really lovely just in the deep dry down though that freshness starts to, 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 to dissipate but what you've got to really understand with this one is it's a big hitting perfume it charges off your skin it's unabashed it's unapologetic it's bold it's excellent it really really reminds me of an amouage release now not a specific um release from amouage but just you know under christopher chong's stewardship when they were making all these big hitting middle eastern bombshell fragrances i think uh, you know when pierre Nagam was making interlude and all these kind of fragrances were coming out from from the oman um, and you know, Amouage were kind of in their pomp. If this was in that collection, you would believe it completely. It's just got that vibe to it. You know, it's just this potent European style perfume with real Middle Eastern vibe. Now at the moment, this is quite pertinent because it's almost like a role reverse of what we're seeing where lots and lots of Middle Eastern houses are coming over, they're renting an address in Paris and then they're classing themselves as a, a Parisian Arabic you know, perfume house. And they're not really, they're just Arabic perfume houses trying to kind of get in on, on the European perfumery thing. Whereas when you look, or when, rather when you smell Oud Fortius, you've got this real intelligent European style perfumery so it's very classical but it's got this wonderful exciting and eastern vibe that's running through it and the two two styles of perfumery marry together perfectly it's a beautifully put together fragrance blending is phenomenal you know you really really do have to work to find the notes other than that opening sort of crescendo where the lavender and the patchouli and the bergamot are really really apparent everything then takes an awful lot of work to try and pick out notes which is how it should be um, and that way you're not trying to break things apart you're just enjoying the perfume you're totally absorbing all the materials that are, are used in there uh, how the perfumer wants you to he doesn't want or you know the perfumer doesn't want a single note shrieking every time what they want is a symphony a blend and that's exactly what happens here the performance is absolutely excellent this goes on and on and on and as i say it's really really bold especially for the first sort of couple of hours it really has massive presence um, and then it softens off um, and just lasts a really really long time well who can wear it well 
This is a masculine fragrance. This is the fragrance I associate with someone of power. I know I'm going to sound like every bloody cliched YouTuber that there is out there. Someone a powerful man would wear, you know, the boss would wear this. But it's right. That's exactly who would wear this. Someone who's incredibly self-confident, someone who isn't shy, isn't retiring, someone who's, you know, into smelling great and smelling unique, because I've not smelled anything that smells exactly the same as this or even near, to be honest. Um, so it's definitely someone with a bold character that likes to stick out. It is definitely masculine leaning. It's probably for the more mature fragrance enthusiasts. I think the, the thrusters will struggle with it because it's not particularly sweet or sweet at all. Um, but again, Worn, on, worn by a confident woman, it will smell fantastic. Um, I just think this is brilliant. And because of the, what I really like about this is because it's got some heavier elements, but because there's enough from the patchouli and especially the lavender in, in the beginning of this, the way the lavender fuses with the spices, can be worn all year round. I think it's not necessarily an oud for winter or an oud for summer. I think you'll just be able to wear it wherever you want. I would go light on the sprays in a warmer weather because it is quite potent. But apart from that, I just cannot, I cannot say enough good things about it, and I genuinely mean that. This is a gorgeous perfume, um, and when this starts hitting other reviewers, um, and when you know other other people start getting to smell it, you're going to hear a lot about this one. Now, I will say Dan has sent me this, but you know, so we should. We're old mates, um, but again, if I didn't like this, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It's absolutely brilliant, and also, you know, please. Don't forget about this guy as well. This one's really, really good too. Tempest is well worth a look. And if you haven't tried Viridi from the original one, why not? This is a beautiful, beautiful, gentlemanly fragrance. So there you go. I've gushed a lot about a great house. I really hope that you've tried some of these or you're going to try some of these. And if you have, please hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think or speak to us on Instagram. You can always message me on there and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. If I've missed anything out or, or there's something else you want to know, just let us know and I will do my best to answer your queries. Anyway, thanks very much for your time. Um, obviously, there's been a little bit of humour in this video. Um, but I just don't want that to detract from the quality of these fragrances that we're talking about today. Um, they're fantastic, so fill your boots. Anyway, thanks a lot, cheers, and bye.